as far as the eyes can see. A lot of times we pray and we say, um, Lord, give to me as far as my eyes can see. But what happens when your lens is faulty? What happens when you can't see far? What happens when even what you can see is clouded by all the past experiences and the trauma that life has dealt or brought your way? Then you now realize that immediately the prayer point has to change. It has to go back to the basics and say, Lord, clean my lens. Help me to see correctly. Help me to even see through your lens. So wash the lenses of my life. Because if you are showing me something and whatever or the lens through which I'm seeing the thing that you're showing me is clouded by past experiences and the murkiness of life, then I will not even be able to see what you are showing me appropriately in order to even discern what you're doing per time, per season. And so, in this season, which is so sensitive, where God is doing so many amazing things, it's very easy to miss what he's doing if we don't have the correct lens. And so before you say, oh, Father, give to me as far as I can see, ask him to correct your lens. Ask him to correct the way that you view life. Because if there's a blessing that is coming, and you're not seeing it correctly, or the devil has already put in your pathway things, character traits, or even tendencies. Oh, I don't do people. I don't do this. I don't do that. What happens when your blessing is locked in people? What happens when the next season is locked in a person? So the devil has already put in your pathway landmines to say, make sure that you don't mess with new, or how they say it, no new friends, or people are always out to get you. But then in every situation in the world, when God wants to bless a man, he does what? He sends a man. So as we prepare, even to navigate from the wilderness season or from your season of transition into your promised land, you need for God to wash your lenses. In fact, if you remember, I think it's Numbers 13 that says, we were like grasshoppers in our sights. It was not in the sight of the enemies, so it was in our sights. So you now realize that how you see yourself is so key. How you discern situations is, <laughs> your life depends on your ability to be able to discern and write. One of my favorite prayer points to pray for myself and for anybody that I care about is, Lord, whatever is in any situation, help me to rightly discern so that I don't go away leaving a lot on the table. Let me explain. So there's a story in the Bible of the king and Elisha. And the king has his enemies at the gate and he comes and he says, help me. My enemies at the gate. I need victory. So what does Elisha says? Say, open the window and shoot. Take this bow and arrow and shoot. And so he shoots three times. And Elisha is so upset. I wish you had done more because now you only defeat your enemies three times. Immediately the Lord said to me, Esther, take this prayer point and pray. Ask me for heightened discernment to know what is in every situation per time, per season. So that when you are having what seems to be a random conversation at an airport, you don't say, oh, I, I'm in my feelings. I don't talk to people. I don't talk to strangers. Not knowing that that person, that stranger that you're sitting next to can be the one that will define your destiny for the next couple of decades. So you are saying, oh, I just want to read my book. I just want to be by myself. And the Holy Spirit is nudging you and say, strike up a conversation. Be it as random as it might be. And you say no. Do you know the cost of that disobedience? You will never know. And that is one of the ironies or the most heartbreaking things of life. Because you will never know what is in missed opportunities. So we need to operate in this season with a heightened sense of discernment. The Lord says, reach out to somebody, send a word of encouragement. Oh, you know, uh, you know, I don't want anybody to, you know, uh, insult me. I don't want this. I don't want that. But you don't realize that in sending that word of encouragement, it reminds the person that they've been meaning to reach out to you for months. You don't know what is on their heart. You don't know what God is staying on their side of the table. Yours is to obey. 
And it's not for you to try and figure out, okay, if I do this, then this will be the result. No. In fact, the person may just, their work in your life may just to be a connector. So you go somewhere, you're at, a, you're at a gym, and then you and the person, you just finish working out, and the Lord says, talk to the person about your music idea. What does my gym body have to do with my music idea? You're talking to the person about the music idea because you're obedient, and the person is looking at you as if they've seen a ghost. What happened? How did you know the conversation I was having two days ago? How did you know that we were at that point having a conversation saying there's a gap in our portfolio and this is the kind of thing that we're looking for? If you did not obey, you, have, you would never have known the cost of your disobedience because that opportunity would have gone into the ether and you would not even have known that God had set you up for that pivotal moment of destiny that you have spent the last six months praying about. And so you realize that sensitivity in this season is key. And sensitivity is not goosebumps, is not shaking in the spirit. Sensitivity is found in obedience. As the, as the Lord tells you, you move. Because what? Delayed obedience is equal to, in this season, disobedience. And it's no longer, oh, Father, give me another chance. Your other chance may come 20 years from now. So you need to be sensitive. So when you're praying, Lord, expand my 10 pegs, expand my horizon. It will happen to me suddenly. Amos 9, is that not what we like to quote? You know, to make your head swim. Make sure that your movement, your obedience, your surrender is also so speedy that it makes your head swim as well. One of them is not operational in isolation. Everything must happen. So as the Lord is speaking, you are moving. You don't have to understand it. And in this season, please, as smart as you are, as intellectual as you are, as brilliant as you are, as degreed up as you are, sacrifice all of that right to understand for obedience. Because the Holy Spirit, our superstar, is in the business of lining things up. It makes you, so that it makes you look like you planned it all along. But a lot of things will only make sense in hindsight. A lot of things only happen when things are falling into place and people say, how did you know? But because you have so committed yourself to God, because you have said, Lord, I surrender. If you can use anything, use me for your glory. You will find that nothing in you will be able to take credit for what the Holy Spirit has done in your life. And so when a season where the Lord is not going to use your academic qualifications, he's not going to even use your work experience. He's not even going to use the things that you have taken pride in. It is in your weakness that his strength will be found. And when I'm talking about weakness, please, I'm not condoning sin. <laughs> lest, lest we take it out of context. I'm saying those things that have hurt you, those things that have broken your heart, those things that even when you were crying, you were obeying God. Through your tears, you were like, God, you see my heart. Everything in me wants to do what the flesh wants. But Lord, I surrender to your will. Have mercy on me. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. You will find that those places of personal victory, silent victory, are the places that the Lord is going to capitalize on. And it may not be that he uses your pain as a platform, that is for some people, but what he will do is the capacity that he has built inside of you is what you don't realize is the muscle for the next season that you're entering into. And so every time when flesh was dying, muscle was being built. And so you realize that you enter into a place and you are like, I don't know, but I feel like I've been here before. I feel like I have grace for this season. I feel like all those times when I was learning to forgive, all those times when I was forcing myself to heal, all those times when I was waking up when I didn't feel like it, when I was praying when I didn't feel like it, when I was um, building relationships when I didn't feel like it, is serving me here. And people will wonder, have you done this before? Because when we recommended you, we thought you were inexperienced. But the way you are wearing this, it looks like you have worn this thing before. It looks like you have walked in this before. You now realize that God does not waste anything. But we waste too much time trying to understand our current location, not realizing that whatever God is doing has nothing to do with what we think or what we feel, but he has a lot to do with the long term that he can see. Because God is the master chess player. And so if I will say anything to you in this season, when you are praying 
and you are saying amen to the expansion, to the um, to the blessings that will make your head swim. Also say amen to the surrender. Say amen to the capacity building. Say amen to the stretching. Say amen to all the things that God is doing in and through you in this season because all of those things are the building blocks for the answers to your prayers. God bless you.